What now? Divide by 1.52. So do that. You got calculators. It's kind of nice. Actually, can you tell me what is 6 divided by 1.52? 3.94. 3. Did you have to round? 3.95. Uh, 3.9. Okay, so they, they got 3.94 something something? What, what? Yeah. 94736. Yeah. Okay, so round appropriately if you're going to round. Make sure with percentages though you give me a couple of places. So if you're going to do, don't just do 4. Don't, don't round like 4%. Do the three point at least the tenth. Normally, you do to the hundredth on these small numbers. So three point nine five. Three point nine five. Is that a percent? Yes. Yeah, yes. we're looking for percent. So here's the the interpretation. Interpretation is if your population decreased from one point five two million to one point four six million and you find the difference between them and you set up your percent equation based on what you started with, that population dropped effectively 3.95%. That could mean that their tax revenue is going to go down 3.95%. Now, 3.95%, that doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? I mean, if you walk into a store and they go, you're having a 3.95% sale, you're going to be like, so what? I want like a 50% sale. Well, the population did drop 50%. But if you're talking about billions of dollars in revenue, 3.95 is a lot, right? So they're going to have to take that into account if they do their city planning. So figuring out how much your population dropped and then figuring out percentage-wise what that is, that could be very important to some people. How many people feel okay with this so far? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, have you guys ever heard the, uh, the statistics on the news that says, well, Fresno's pretty bad because they have the most crime, you know, or, or Atwater's bad because they have the most car, or Modesto's bad because they have the most cars stolen. Stockton. Stockton has the most cars they do, right, in the whole nation. Big car. <laughs> so you, you, want a, you want a free car, go to Stockton. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't steal cars. It's not good for you. Help. Uh, so anyway, anyway, though, if... If you hear that statistic and you go, well, wait a second, have you ever thought that that doesn't make sense? Because Stockton has a lot less people than like LA, right? How can they, does that mean that more cars are stolen in Stockton altogether than LA? No, no, definitely not. I mean, more cars are stolen in LA, but per the amount of people, if you compare that to the number of people living in Stockton, yeah, per capita is, it means per person or per thousand people. That's how they do crime rate. They say, well, how many crimes are being committed compared to the number of people who live in that area? You with me on that? LA is a huge town. They're going to have more crime in total than we're going to have here in Merced. However, the number of people in LA is way bigger than the number of people in Merced. True? So, but if you look at the, the per capita, you say, well, you know, maybe LA per capita has just as much crime as LA. Because there's less people, there's less crime, but compared to the people who live here, there might be the same amount of crime. There might be more, there might be less. But you have to look at per like 100 people or per 1,000 people. And that's what they do for the, the news. They say, okay, the crime rate, people are always talking about crime rate, saying if crime is falling or rising. The crime rate fell here. From 27 crimes per thousand to 24 crimes per thousand. What we want to do is figure out the percent decrease in crime. So let's go for it. What's the first thing you might want to do since you're given two numbers here? You're given two numbers. What numbers are you looking at? Are you looking at the thousand? Does that thousand really do anything for you? No. That's just telling you what it's based on. It's based on 24 crimes out of a thousand people. So what numbers are you looking at? 
24 and 27? 24. Okay, sure. What's your first step then? Good. That would be 27 minus 24. What are you going to get? 3. That's kind of nice. No weird decimal numbers anymore. After that, can you say, oh, it dropped 3%. Does that make sense? No. No, because right now that's just a number. It's just based on the difference between here and here. The next step is the important one. The next step is you're supposed to write that out. Write out on your paper, whatever the difference is, in this case 3, is what percent of 27. Wait, well you said, what, what was it? What percent of what? What are you supposed to start with? 27. Good, so 27 because that's where your crime started. It actually fell. That's a good thing, right? We want crime to fall. We don't like crime around. We want that to fall as low as possible. So we're saying we started with that 27. We're finding 3 is what percent of that 27. Then we can go ahead and set this up. Of course, that's going to be 100. Can you tell me what goes in these places? What goes up top? 3. 3. 3 is. Great. What percent? So that would be our x and 27 goes right there. Is over of equals percent over 100. Yeah, you're going to cross multiply. You'll get 27x equals 300. And last step, of course, is to divide. If you divide on this, what is 300 divided by 27? 11. <laughs> 1.11? One, one one one? Yes. Is this all ones on your screens? Yes. Isn't that interesting when stuff like that happens? Kind of cool, I think. I don't know why. 11.11 what? Percent. What's it mean to you? What did the crime do? It dropped 11%. See, sometimes if you, if you talk to somebody, you go, well, crime rate dropped from 27 to 24. They go, well, that's only three. That's not that good. You only drop three three crimes. I mean, I can deal with them. I don't care, you know. But when you say it like, crime rate fell 11 percent, what sounds better? Crime rate dropped by three, or crime rate fell 11 percent? That sounds better, doesn't it? And on the news, that's what you would hear if a if the the sheriff came on and said, you know what, under me, our crime rate has fallen 11 percent. That's something you can you can visualize. You go, oh, that's that's a significant drop. You, you must be doing a good job. If it dropped like 30%, you're like, wow, 30%. It's like a third less crime. It's pretty cool. But it, it, it makes it so you can actually understand the numbers a little bit better if you talk about percent decrease rather than actual decrease. Sure, it dropped three crimes out of every 1,000. You know, that doesn't seem like a lot. But when, when, you, when you put it this way, that's a big decrease from 27 to 24. That's 11% decrease in crime. So that must, something must be working for them. How many people understand the, the idea of percent decrease so far? Okay. Now there's one more way we can look at it. You guys ever bought a car? How many people have bought a car before? Have you ever bought a new car before? Oh my gosh. You know what happens when you buy a new car? You get screwed, man. You drive it off a lot, bam, you lose a lot of money. Because as soon as you buy that car, you're never going to be able to sell it for the same value. Let's get like a collector car or something. But typically you go down and buy a Hyundai Sonata or something like that. You drive it off a lot and bam, all of a sudden it's worth less money. Just the day you buy it, you've already lost at least $3,000. You're not going to be able to sell it back. The moment you drive it off a lot. Seriously. So that, that, that action of losing value. So for, for instance, um, if you have a, a 2002 Toyota Corolla, is it going to be as worth as much now as it was in 2005? No. How about even two years ago? No. Is it going to be worth as much next year as it is right now? No. No, no, no. That's called depreciation. Not appreciation, right? It's not gain value. It's actually losing value. So every day you have that car, it loses a little bit more. Every time you drive it, it loses a little bit more value. That's why cars are generally not a good investment. No one goes out there and goes, you know what? I think I'm going to invest in cars. Buy a whole bunch of cars and drive them around and sell them. You're going to lose money, right? People do it with houses because houses appreciate generally. Generally, unless this economy, they all tank. But generally, houses go up in value. So you buy a house, maybe 10 years from now, you're expecting it to be actually worth more money. Are you with me on that? Yes, no? <laughs> we had a housing bubble, right? Housing bubble actually went way up there. And then it went down. But generally, real estate has appreciated over the years. Back in the 70s, you could buy a house for $3,000. Now, sure, inflation has gone up. 
uh, but that also means that the housing values have appreciated over time. We're talking about the other thing. We're talking about dropping. So if you, if you have this car, it's going to drop in value over time. It gets used, it's worth less and less and less, and actually it drops like this, if you watch my hands. When you buy the car, it's way up here, it drops radically at first, and then starts leveling off. So for instance, like I had a 92 Blazer at one point. I bought the car for $3,000 out the door. Uh, five years later, I sell, sold it for $3,000. Why? Because it's not going to lose any more money. Unless the engine blows up, it's, it's pretty much level. Uh, year after year, it's going to be about the same because you could, you could sell it for scrap metal and still make three grand on it. You with me? So after a while, it's, it's going to level off. But initially, you're, you're dropping fast with, with cars. So let's see if we can do this problem and find out how much a, a truck is going to be worth after you buy it a few years down the road. How much did you spend on your truck? Let's say a nice. How much does a nice truck cost right now? Fifty. Yeah, 50, 50 how much? Seventy-five thousand dollars for a truck. What? Seriously? No. Forget that. How about like? I'm not spending more than fifty grand on a truck. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Okay. That sounds good. You're decent, like F-150, yeah. right? Thirty-three. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thirty-three. I like that. So. Your car has decreased, let's say it's, uh, it's two years down the road. Your car has decreased in value 24%. You paid $33,000 for it. What we want to know is how much is it worth now? Well, we're going to look at this. It's going to be a little bit different than the last problem. If you look at the last problem, the last problem asked what's the percent decrease from one number to another? From one, it would be like a dollar figure to a dollar figure. Do we have that different? Do we have the two numbers to subtract over here? No. Actually, it's a little bit easier. It's already giving you the percent decrease. It's telling you, hey, you, this one said you had to find out 11%, right? You had to find that out. This said you're, you are decreasing 24%. All I need you to do is find the value of that. So step number one, you can't do it. Step number one, we find the difference between two numbers. You don't have a difference between two numbers. All you have is what you started with and a percent decrease. So step number two, you're going to write out a basic percent equation. What we want to know essentially is what is 24% of 33,000? Is that what, isn't that what you want to know? Yes. What is 24% of 33,000? Hey, stop for just a second, look at the board here real quick. Have you noticed that what's changing between here and here is simply what we're looking for? We had three is, what percent? Here we have what is, 24%. We're already given the percent. Here you were looking for the percent. You're just changing what you're looking for. Now we're looking for what the is is. Of course, we'll have 100. I know the 24 is going to go there because that's the percent.